This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 27th of January and let's get into it. A cross-site scripting via file upload vulnerability was found on TikTok. Now TikTok is obviously a huge platform for short form content and they have their ads ticketing platform where you can do everything related to advertisements. Now on there, there is a file upload functionality and due to some missing checks, it was possible to upload SVG files. Now a seasoned hacker will know that it's not a long path from SVG to XSS and a payload as shown here above could trigger an XSS because your browser will just execute that. And that is how Blue Blue got an XSS on TikTok. So a huge congratulations on your 500 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 28th of January and let's get into it. An IDOR was found on Lark Technologies. Now Lark Technologies, they're a collaboration suite that uh, tries to tie in chats and calendars and, and mails all together in one nice collaborative suite and on there you can compose emails and send emails to other people which can include files. Now this researcher found an IDOR where the specific file ID was not tied to an account so you could actually uh, compose emails with a file ID of another user's file and in that way steal that file. So you can steal private files using this IDOR. So Imran Nisar, a huge congratulations on this finding and on your 2000 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 29th of January and let's get into it. An issue was found on Imgur where they have no maximum limit for their password length. Now Imgur is a website where you can share images, memes and whatnot and you can also create an account. And you might, might wonder, well, why is it an issue that there's no maximum on the password length? Well, this re researcher tried to make an account with an immensely long password and that caused a lot of issues. First of all, this password is going to be hashed to be stored in the database. Now, most hashing algorithms, they are based on a blocks. So the password is split up into blocks and those blocks are then handled. However, if you have a ton of blocks, then this is going to use so many resources of the server that the server just can't keep up. This will effectively result in a denial of service attack. So Blackfly, a huge congratulations on this finding and on your 250 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 30th of January and let's get into it. An XSS was found on Imgur.com. Now Imgur is a site where you can share images, memes and whatnot with your friends and family, but an issue was found there. On the site, you can make an account and you can give people emeralds, uh, a currency on Imgur. However, if you give people emerald, emeralds and you intercept that request, you will see that there is a redirect URL parameter. Now this parameter was vulnerable to XSS because it was not properly sanitized and you could set it to anything. So if you changed it to, for example, JavaScript colon alert document dot cookie, then you could potentially steal the cookies of other people, obviously if you use a more advanced payload. But an XSS was found, so a huge congratulations who am I 991 for this really cool finding and for your 100 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 31st of January and let's get into it. An XSS was found on Omis. Now Omis is an online payment gateway for accepting and managing online payments and an XSS was found in that. So the researcher figured out that if he sends a request with a specific header, the X forwarded host header, that that value is being reflected onto the page. Now the X forwarded host header is a header that is obviously used to identify the original host of a request um, because oftentimes requests go to very through various reverse proxies and stuff like that. So this header is very useful in that regards. However, the web server just reflect the value onto the page. So the researcher could just send a request with this header and well, get an XSS. So a huge congratulations Oblivion Light for this amazing finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 1st of February and let's get into it. A misconfiguration allowed a DLL preloading attack on Monero. Now Monero is a cryptocurrency and they have a wallet that works on Windows. So you can use that client and that client it will load some 
libraries, some DLLs. Uh, however, the, some of the libraries that it tries to load are not present in the applications directory, so Windows will try to search for them in the Windows root and in the path of the user. Now, an attacker can create a DLL with that name and put it in the path and then, well, the client will execute that dynamic library. This way an attacker can gain arbitrary code execution. Note that this is a privilege escalation issue, so the attacker will already need to have pawned this user, but this could be used to then further escalate privileges. So NIM4, a huge congratulations on this cool finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 2nd of February and let's get into it. An issue was found on Urban Company, a company that connects professionals with people in need of at-home services. Now this issue allows a full compromise of a certain subdomain of Urban Company and that is because they used a weak Flask session key. Now Flask sessions are signed with a static secret. And if that secret gets disclosed, then that's a huge issue because then the attacker will be able to sign his own session and will, for example, be able to change his ID to one, becoming the administrator or whatnot. Now, Ian found that this website used a weak Flask session key, so he was able to crack it. And the cool thing of the story is that this researcher found this purely by his automation and he received an amazing bounty of 1,500 USD. So a huge congratulations, Ian, on this finding.